but that's it as far as a pattern. Hey gang, welcome to the Ash Christine Designs podcast, episode 8. This is a podcast mainly about knitting and knitwear design, but there have been some crochet things as well as other things mixed in. You can find me on Instagram as Ash Christine Designs and on Ravelry as Ash Christine. You can also find me on Etsy as Vessel Stitch Co. and Ash Christine Designs. I do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you um, check out the group section on Ravelry and type in Ash Christine Designs, it should come right up. But don't worry about searching for any of that because everything will be linked in the description box below. If you are a new viewer checking out the podcast for the first time, welcome. I hope that you enjoy. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. If you are a returning viewer, you might notice that the background behind me is a little bit different um, than where I usually record. Um, I said a few podcasts ago that I have been experimenting with where I actually want to um, record these podcasts, so this is just one of the background options that I have. For anyone that's curious, that is my writing wall. So all those pictures back there, you can't really see because they're out of focus, but all those pictures, pictures back there are um, inspiration pictures. And speaking of things that you might notice if you're a returning viewer, um, I am recording on a new camera today. Um, it is a Canon camera. I've been recording on a separate device, but I finally think that I figured this out. Um, figured out the audio issues and the um, video issues. So hopefully, fingers crossed, everything goes well today. Speaking of audio issues, my apologies if you can hear a little like low hum in the background. I do have a fan running because it's quite warm where I'm at right now. Um, and unfortunately, I can't turn it off because Nobody wants to see it when I get all hot and sweaty. Okay, but I thought that we would kind of like jump into things. Um, it's been a while since I recorded. I think it's been like a month. Um, so I don't really remember where I left off. I should have like spot watched last episode and kind of figured out what I was talking about. But anyway, I thought that we would start off with finished objects like we always do. But um, I don't actually remember if I spoke about patterns last week, if I spoke about the winter freeze beanie that went live. Um, I don't have it with me to show you physically, but I will put a picture right there on the screen so you can see what the winter freeze beanie looks like. That released uh, early January, and um, I'll have a link to that in the description box below. Next pattern that released um, was my... Actually, I can't remember the next pattern that released. Oh, it was the Clean Slate Mitts. I'll put that um, in the description, uh, not in the description box, I'll put that in the, um, I'll put a picture right there. And then I'll also include a link in the description box. Um, the Clean Slate Mitts were, are a fingering, um, sorry, something's distracting me. Um, the Clean Slate are a fingering, yeah, a fingering weight uh, fingerless mitts, try saying that 10 times past, that uses um, a marling technique um, in a, kind of like a ribbing pattern, a broken rib pattern. Um, and it creates this really, really fun um, way of marling your yarns together and getting you no know, more bang for your buck out of each of your little mini skeins. I used a um, mini skein set from uh, just something I'd purchased. The, all the yarn information and everything is linked um, on the pattern page, which I'll have linked um, in the description box below. So those are the two patterns that came out in January. And then in February, so far, I've released my Madison Square Beanie Light, which is this right here. I'm gonna show it back here and then I'll bring it up close. Um, this is a cabled beanie that is, um, if you're a returning viewer, you might know this, but in November of, I think it was 2018, but in, yeah, it was 2018, I released my Madison Square Beanie, the original, which is a worsted weight pattern. Um, and it's super fun, it was really well received. So I actually had a lot of people ask if I was going to release a light version, a fingering weight version. So I have knit that up. I knit it out of um, the Red Pansies Voyager Twist in the Gold Crest colorway. I'm gonna bring it close so you can see. Hopefully you can see all those good cable details. I loved knitting this hat. It was very much like um, knitting uh, a sock head hat because it is fingering weight so it just kind of like goes on forever. And it was a great uh, project to have on the needles to kind of like pick up and take with me places because it was just a simple uh, cable repeat. It is slightly altered. It is slightly altered from the worsted weight version because the worsted weight version just didn't um, work as well with uh, fingering weight. It needed just a little 
a little rejigging but it is very very similar um in fact when i look at it i can't even tell that there is a slight difference between the two because and i've done a ton of the worsted weight um the worsted weight madison square beanies but yeah this is the uh, figuring weight version it is now live on ravelry i'll have a link in the description box below where you can look at this pattern um and then again all the yarn details and everything um are there but again this is red pansy voyager twist in the gold crest colorway sorry if you can hear that it sounds like the uh, school bus is running oh i think it's the ice cream truck how weird anyway the next pattern that's coming out, um, well, it will be out by the time this video goes live because I'm recording this on a Tuesday, pattern goes live on Friday, this podcast will go up Sunday. It's going to be a week. <laughs> um, this pattern will be out by then. This, These are the Sweetheart Boot Cuffs. So they don't look like much here, so I, I will insert a picture right there um, so you can see what they look like actually modeled and everything. Um, I really liked knitting these up because these these are so so quick they don't take that much yardage at all i think it's like 70 yards for the smaller size and then like 110 or something for the larger size um so there are two sizes in the pattern um and they do they might look like kind of small or whatever but they do have um, a decent amount of stretch uh, to them so you don't have to worry about like you know will it not fit or whatever and then of course all the finished measurements and the sizes that it will actually fit will be um are laid out on the pattern and as well on the pattern page. That's what it looks like. It's just a simple, um, it's not even a true cable, it's just a, a twist pattern or a twist stitch repeat. Sorry if my up close shots are not as in focus as they used to be um, or as previous episodes. The old device that I was using did have autofocus and this one does not. This camera um, only has auto, uh, manual focus, so I'm having to manually focus it myself. But hopefully that's fine um, and again i'll get better with it as uh as i use this camera more and more but that's it as far as pattern news goes um so now we can just move right on into finished objects of which i have a ton it's been a month okay so <sighs> get ready for this so first up in finished objects i crocheted three mug rugs i'll put pictures um here in the corner just one right after the other um i crocheted them in three different colors um i followed a pattern by I don't know how you say the name, and I also don't remember her real name, but uh, her username is uh, Car Careberry Crafts, Caraberry Crafts, something like that. Um, I'll have her pattern linked in the description box below. Um, I don't remember actually what the pattern's called. It might just be like super simple mug rug or something, simple crocheted mug rug. I don't remember, but I'll have it linked in the description box below, um, as well as like her Instagram page and everything. Um, because I didn't find her on Ravelry, I found her on, on Etsy, actually. Well, to be fair, I found her on Instagram. And that linked me to her Etsy shop, and then I looked for her on Ravelry. It wasn't on Ravelry. That was a little tangent. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, but those three mug rugs that I did, um, I finished them kind of one right after the other over the course of, like, a day or two. Um, they're super simple to work up. Um, I really enjoy working them up. They are um, very quick projects, so it was nice to kind of, like, bang out three things right in a row made me feel like super accomplished one day these are not going order because i don't remember the specific order um but i also finished the uh, madison square beanie light which i showed you um and it released uh first week of february second week of february something like that um but after that i also crocheted three cupcake candy dishes i'll have pictures right there because again i don't i don't have those with me right now i might just give some away and then you know the others are just somewhere i don't know i don't know where they are but um i do have pictures of them so i will put those right there i crocheted three of them and then i also knit a coffee cozy which i'll again i'll put a picture right there um that might be it as far as things i don't have to show you because i don't remember if i finished anything else in that time i'm sure there's something i'm forgetting but we'll get back to that later um for now let me show you the finished object that i do have to show you so the finished object that I actually have um, to show you physically are my January socks. I'm going to scoot back a little bit. I'm on a wheelie chair. So hopefully that you can get a full uh, view of these socks. This used um, Patton's Croy socks in the turquoise jacquard colorway. I don't know if that's how you say jacquard, but that's how I say it. Um, in the turquoise jacquard colorway with flax as the heel um, and toe. So these were super, super fun. They used 
Um, basically the entire skein, sorry I just realized there's a, a fuzzy on it. I've worn these once or twice, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, um, this used the entire skein. Um, there's like a little tiny nugget left. Sorry, I'm pulling hair off. This is distracting me. There's a little tiny nugget left, not even enough to do a uh, cozy memory square with. So I'm actually debating, I know this is like too much, but I'm actually debating ordering another skein so I can do a square in my cozy memories. You guys can be my voice of reason. Comment in the uh, comment below and tell me if that's irrational or not. <laughs> because I want a square in my Cozy Memories blanket because these were the first socks I knit in 2021. So I feel like I should be remembered in my Cozy Memories blanket. I have everything else. I have every other pair of socks I've ever knit are in my Cozy Memories blanket. So I feel like these should be in there. But I'm going to put one down and just show you one up close. Again, my apologies if the close-up shots are not as in focus as they used to be, but um, there you can see kind of some of the details of it a little bit clearer, see the coloring a little bit better, hopefully. Um, but yeah, these were knit on US size 2, um, Chiaogu Red Lace 90-inch circulars. I did the, I started the cuff on a 40-inch uh, Chiaogu circular because I find it difficult to knit the first few rounds of ribbing on the 9 inch circular. Once I do like three rounds and then I can just just go and it's fine. But this first initial rounds, the cast on and the first round um, tend to get really tight for me. I'm, I only knit 60 stitch, uh, st <coughs> excuse me, I only knit 60 stitch socks. Um, but yeah, so cast on with the, uh, cast on with the long needle, the 40 inch, and then I did 9 inch for the rest of it, including the heel. Um, I do my heels on the 9 inch circular now. I used to transfer them to DPNs, um, and I also used to transfer them to, sometimes I would do them on the, the long circular, the 40 inch, but I've now figured out how to do them on um, my 9 inch circular, a way that's comfortable for me. So that's how I do them now. And then when I get to the toe, I switch back to the, to the uh, 40 inch circular so I can do the toe. And then one of the other finished objects I have to show you, um, I actually finished these sometime last week I think so these are not like old finished objects but um, I knit or not sorry I didn't knit I crocheted three of these rainbow um, headbands so they've got the little twist in the center which is super super cute they look like tiny little bows they're adorable I'm dying um, I crocheted three of these from one skinny yarn I used red heart super saver uh, in the retro stripe colorway or it's, it's a red heart super saver stripes in the retro um, colorway retro stripe I think um, but yeah it's this fun little rainbow Thing. I think it's so so cute. Um, for those of you that are new to the podcast you might not know but I do sell um, finished makes on Etsy which is what this um, is for which is what all three of these are for actually. Um, I would insert pictures of the other two but they literally look the exact same so I don't really feel the need to do that. And then this is the last finished object I have. I'm counting it as a finished object even though the ends are not woven in and it's also not um, attached it's wide open but this is another um, one of those headbands that I just showed you. Um, this right here it's another one of those but it's just not um it's not sealed yet I haven't like done that little twist in the center um I left it open because I am starting another one and I was concerned that because I was switching yarns again um that this one I would need to measure it against it I don't know what I was thinking but yeah basically I have not done the twist yet and I'm not woven in the ends but um this is crocheted out of big twist in the I think it's the wine colorway I don't remember but if, I, if I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen, but I don't think I am. Um, it's the wine colorway, and it is. it uses the same hook as the others, which is a, a USI or a 5.5 millimeter. I think some places, or some brands have it as a 5 millimeter, but I've always seen it as a 5.5. So anyways, so that's that. But yeah, I crocheted uh, those three rainbow ones, and then immediately crocheted this one. And then I started another one I needed this one to measure against, if that makes any sense. So that's why the ends are not woven in and it's not closed. But now that I have started the other one, now I can um, close this one up and weave in the ends. So maybe I'll do that later today. Oh, I just looked behind me. It turns out I did put all three of them on the, the uh, space behind me so I could grab them all. So there you go. It's three of the twisted headbands that I have um, in the Red Heart Super Saver Stripes uh, Retro Stripe colorway. So that is all of the finished objects. I don't think that I missed any, but maybe I did, who knows. Um, so let's move on into works in progress. That's the ice cream truck again. I don't even know, I don't even know if you guys can hear that, but it's 
it's loud. <laughs> anyway, my first work in progress is one that you guys will have seen. Uh, if you're a returning viewer, you will have seen this. If you're not, I'll go over the details again. Um, but this is the Water Squirrel Cardigan by uh, Aceta Krebs or uh, City Spinet. I think is her her name her uh, design name, but Aceta Krebs is what I what I always say. Um, this is the Water Squirrel Cardigan that I've been knitting for my sister. Uh, don't even know if I'm able to show the whole thing. I've got kind of a close camera angle today. But yeah, so that is where I separated for the sleeves right here. If you can see that blue string, that's where I separated for the sleeves. And then that's what I've knit down past the sleeves. Um, if you're a returning viewer, you will know that the last time that I recorded a podcast, this was, uh, I had, uh, I was a row away from splitting for the sleeves. I was about to say that I had just split for the sleeves, but I don't think I'd even done that. I think I was a row away from splitting from the sleeves. So since last episode, which has now been like four weeks, I have knit from there all the way down to here. So I didn't put a progress keeper in to mark my progress because I knew that I would be like basically starting, uh, I'd basic, basically be able to use the sleeve separation as a progress keeper itself because I hadn't quite, I don't think I had separated the sleeves yet, but yeah. And then I'm going to come and give you guys a better look at the uh, detailing. I'll actually, I'll show you underneath the arms because that's a really good place to see it. So that is kind of like the laced cable panel. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. I adore it in real life. My sister's like obsessed. She's like, it's so pretty. And it's, this is a super simple pattern as well. Like I thought, um, I don't get intimidated by much, but I thought when I saw this that maybe I might have to like really focus, but as long as you make sure that you read the actual row you're on, um, these cable uh, lace panels are really, really easy to do, so. I'll have this uh, project page link below, um, so you can check out all the details, but I'll go over them in just a second. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. I'm not sure if this needed a close-up shot. It's kind of hard to tell because on my tiny little screen right now, um, when I was showing it far away, it looked like you could really see the details, but you know how it goes. Sometimes you put it on the computer and it's like, wow, you couldn't see that at all. But yeah. So those are the little lace uh, repeats, and then I'm going to give you guys a uh, better view. This is the color progression. So I'm getting this out of Lion Brand yarn um, in the cupcake, or sorry, I'm getting this out of Lion Brand cupcake yarn. Um, it's a yarn that my sister found in my stash and was like, will you make me something out of this? Then I said, absolutely. Um, I'm now on the second skein. So the first skein started at this uh, dark gray section and then transitioned into browns, tans, and then finally a white stripe. <clears throat> and then, oh yeah, no, it ended with this gray stripe, this light gray stripe, which I found strange, but then when I attached the new skein, I didn't find it strange at all. It's weird because I think that I would have noticed a jar if I had started here with this dark gray that's up at the top. Um, see if I can actually fold it. Yeah, I think that I would have found that much more jarring than having this gray stripe here. Um, but when I was talking to my sister, I was like, I'm confused because I don't, I don't know why it's ending with gray if it's like going through a natural color progression to a light, like why would it end with a gray? And then it wasn't until I touched this, the second skein that I was like, that makes sense why it would end with the grays because it's transitioning back into the darker colors. You'll have to forgive me. I'm, <laughs> apparently I don't know how yarn works. <laughs> But yeah, I think that it's coming out really, really great. I think that it looks really, really good. Um, my sister's super excited. I'm super excited. Um, and this is a whip from 2020 that I'm hoping to uh, get off my needles sooner rather than later. Um, I have a bunch of those projects actually that I'm hoping to get off my needles. The first project I, ha I had from, <coughs> excuse me, the first project I had from 2020 that I got off my needles was um, my Madison Square Beauty Light, which was the pattern that I showed you just a few minutes ago, the cable beanie. Um, but yeah, this one's up next. I'm hoping to get this one off the needles um, sooner rather than later. I was about to say that was my only whip from 2020, but then I remember I have this one to show you. Um, so this one, I always forget to show bags, but this one is living in my um, bag from Joy in the Stitches. Hopefully you can see that tag down there. Joy in the Stitches. Which houses all my pins. Um, so I have my Crazy Sock Lady Summer Sock Camp pin. I have a pin that my... A uh, friend got me for Christmas and then one that uh, my sister got me for Christmas. So this is where that lives. It's my Joanna Stitches bag. It is almost outgrown it though and I'm getting scared because <laughs> I don't have, really have another bag that I can put it in. Not a zippered one anyway. Um, and I'm kind of like 
certain projects need zipper bags because otherwise they're just gonna come right out of that thing. Anyways though, this is a shawl. It's a design that should be coming out uh, in November. Don't quote me on that because you know how I am. I say one thing and then it doesn't happen. So what this looks like. Ignore those stitch markers in the center. I had to mark to count. That's what it looks like. Let me see if I can wheel back a little bit. I'll show you guys. We're just banging into things. Show you guys the whole thing. Ugh. Okay, that's what that looks like. And, uh, I don't know how well you can tell from back there, but it's got the, um, it has sections of stock in it, and then it's broken up by little garter stripes. My battery light is flashing at me, so give me one second and I'll be right back. Sorry if the angle has slightly changed. I did have to um, <clears throat> take my camera off the tripod in order to put the battery in. I didn't realize that the battery door is covered by the tripod. I just looked again for some reason. I didn't believe myself when I was saying it just now. But anyway, I was talking about this shawl. This is my um, shawl design that's coming out. Um, it should be November, but it has stock, stock in it sections and then it's broken up by single um, garter stripes in a contrasting color. And then the contrasting color is gonna come back at the end to do a nice border. Um, I'm not gonna spoil what that is yet, what that border looks like, but this is how the shawl is looking so far. It looks super big on camera right now, but I'm only at like 200 stitches, which is concerning me because this is all I have left of this skinny yarn, the main color. And I'm concerned that maybe I may have to order a second skein so I've been debating on whether or not the this colorway, and I'll talk about the yarn in just a second, um, this colorway is out of stock of the place that I've been ordering it from. I could check another website, but I don't really want to. Um, this is colorway is out of stock where I've been ordering my yarn. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if I should wait till it comes back in stock and then order it then, or if I should order one skein darker, or one shade darker, excuse me, so I can transition into like a darker section and then finish off with the border color. But I don't know if that would be too distracting or if it would like take away from the design. So I may have to like play with it a little bit, may have to um, see if I have a uh, colorway in my stash that's slightly darker and then kind of experiment with that and see how I feel. But, but yeah, that's where I'm at with this um, and I will keep you guys updated um, as and when this progresses. Um, but hopefully, again, this is another one that I would like to get off the needles sooner rather than later, even though the design isn't coming out until November, so technically the finished sample isn't due until like June, um, I still would like to finish this within the next couple of weeks because it's been on my needles for a while and I'm kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of bored with it. It's a little stale, um, just to me because I've been working on it for so long. Um, it is a super fun pattern to actually knit up and I would probably knit another one of these. I probably will because I had someone ask if they could have a version in pink and I was like, we'll see. So. Um, Really, really like this pattern still, or this uh, project still, but I am ready for it to get off the needles so I can cast on a new shawl. I've been trying in 2021 to only keep one um, type of project on the needles at one time, so one um, shawl at a time, one pair of socks, which, as I'm saying that, I realize that the next few projects I'm about to show you are going to completely break that rule, but uh, it's for reasons that I'll explain. But before I move on, this yarn is Cascade uh, Heritage Sock in the Riveria... Heather colorway. I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but I'll have it uh, linked in the description box below. It is the Cascade Heather Rivera colorway, and I'll take it up close and show you. And its contrast color, I had to get out of the bag, excuse the chair. Um, its contrast color is also Cascade Heritage um, sock and I don't remember what colorway this is. It's either silver or it's like light gray or something. I don't remember. Their gray colorways were not like, um, they didn't have like a whole lot of specific gray colorway names. They were mainly like medium gray, light gray, dark gray, etc. So I don't remember if this was specifically silver or if it was just labeled as light gray, I don't remember. But yeah, these are the two colors together. I think that they have a lot of contrast. I don't know why that's wound so weirdly, but um, yeah, so those are the pro uh, yarns I'm using for this project. Uh, I think that they have really, really good contrast, and I actually really like working with um, these bases. Um, this, this is a 75-25 um, Superwash Merino Nylon, a pretty standard sock weight base, um, and it is 437 yards, So, which is why I'm concerned about the length of this shawl. The actual like length going down your back 
has hit a pretty good place for me. Once I block it out, it will shrink. Uh, it won't shrink. Okay, it will shrink. I don't know how to explain that. If you block things, then you know what I'm talking about. Um, about how if I stretch it um, widthwise, then it'll shrink lengthwise. If if you if you block, you know what I'm talking about. But um, so if I block it out to like its fullest width, I'm gonna lose some of the length, which is why I'm continuing to knit it. Um, but I am concerned that even with blocking, that the width won't be enough. The length I think should be fine. Um, I think that if I block it out to the full width that the length will shrink maybe two and a half inches to three inches just based on my gauge swatch. Um, hopefully I can squeeze as much of this yarn out as possible and make it as wide as I can. Um, right now I'm trying to get it to go to at least 40 inches. And right now it's like 26, I think, or 27. So I don't know if I need to order another skein and make it work. Or no, sorry, excuse me. I don't know if I need to order another skein or if I need to just make it work. Um, we'll see. I'll give you updates on this project as, as and when I make decisions. And then ignoring my own rule of only one at a time, um, this is now the third sweater I have on my needles. I cast it on, I don't even remember when. It was either uh, early to mid-February I think. I don't remember. It's on my project page somewhere. It was probably early early January. I think I said February, but I meant early to mid-January. Anyway, this is what it looks like so far. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just a back panel, so I have uh, picked up the backside stitches because this is going to be a top-down... It's not seamed. What's the word? It's top-down... My brain is trying to say saddle shoulder, but that's not it. It's a seamed shoulder. What is that called? Set in sleeve. I knew I'd get there eventually if I just <laughs> waited long enough. Um, I have picked up the stitches for the back sleeve of the back um, set in sleeves of the shoulder area, and I have started knitting down. I am almost at the point where I need to start increasing for the um, for the shoulders, but right now it's just straight knitting. Um, the straight stockinette rows. So it's been really fun to kind of pull this out and do a few rows every now and again. Um, this is not, um, this was originally going to be a design, um, but then I realized I wasn't, I wasn't in a place right now in my life where I wanted to tackle more sweater designs. I have my first sweater pattern, my first adult sweater pattern, I should say, coming out um, in March. And I'm just not in a place right now where I want to focus a lot of my knitting time on designing adult garments. Um, it is fun and I do enjoy it but I'm just not in that place in my life right now. So for now, this is just for fun and also for me to test out construction and everything. So when I'm ready to get back into adult garment designing, um, I can make that transition fairly seamlessly because I'll have all these techniques I've already wanted to try figured out without having to worry about how do I write this out if I don't even know what I'm doing. So not that you should wait till you know everything that you need to know before you do something. It's just, again, me, the place in my life right now I'm not ready to, to tackle this type of stuff. But yeah, this is, let me show you the yarn. And uh, this came to me this way with a little split on the underside. But this is um, uh, Loops and Threads Woo Like in the golden yellow colorway. It is, uh, I don't think it's 100% acrylic. It's got some nylon in it, I believe. I always ask, I mean, I always wonder what the hell it is. Okay, 85% acrylic, 15% nylon. So that's what the... Uh, label looks like. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. It is 678 yards. I don't know how much that is in meters. 620 meters. But yeah, I love this colorway. It's such a fall colorway for me. This pattern was originally going to be designed for a fall garment. Um, but again, since it's just a personal piece now, um, it doesn't really matter when I finish it. I'd like to finish it by this autumn. I think that would be cool. But we'll see if I can actually get it done. This is a light fingering weight, um, which I'm working with U.S. size uh, Chiago U.S. size three needles. I just remembered I never said my needle size for the uh, sweater I'm knitting for my sister. Um, that is a U.S. size six, I should say. Um, I don't remember what's called for in the pattern, but I remember I, I think I had to adjust my um, I think I had to adjust my uh, needle size because the gauge wasn't working out for me. But yeah, this is another whip on the needles. Um, I again, this one was started this year, so it's not um, 
is I don't feel like the pull to get it off my needles that quickly. Um, it's also a personal project, so it'll kind of like get a few uh, days of work here and there throughout the week and throughout the month. Um, but it is not a main focus of mine because I do have um, those designs to wrap up and kind of like get get going on. Next up, I have a sock design to show you that's coming out in April. This is um, doesn't actually have a name yet. Um, it is a lace cabled, uh, lace cabled, it is a lace sock. It is a shorty sock, so the heel is already done, uh, the cuff and heel, and then I am moving down through the foot. I've already finished the, the uh, gusset decreases. I'll take it up close so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. It is a cable repeat, or not, sorry, I keep saying cable. It's a lace repeat, pardon me. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Um, and I have the first sock of this pair finished, actually. So here's what it looks like finished. Uh, pardon those markers. I can flip it this way and show it to you this way. Um, those markers just mark every 10 rows. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so it's just a simple lace pattern. I'll take it up close so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. It is a simple um, arrowhead lace pattern. It's actually the same lace pattern I used on my um, Juliet headband, which if I remember, I'll put a picture right there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually the same lace stitch, um, just in a sock form. Um, and again, these are shorty socks. So I've got the um, cuff already done and cuff already done, it's finished. <laughs> so I've got a short cuff and then it goes right into the heel um, to give it that shorty sock. Hopefully I'm not blurry. I, I don't know that I'm that great at refocusing after I've taken it out of regular focus to show something close up, but hopefully it's fine. So, okay, so this one's done, and then I'm just working my way through this one, and let me talk about the markers real quick. Um, this is a trick I actually learned from um, Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady. Um, she's brilliant, by the way. Um, where you put a uh, marker, and I, uh, I use the same markers that she does, which are the, um, the light bulb stitch markers, because they kind of look like a light bulb. And I put them once every 10 rounds, and so that way when I'm working on the second sock, I know once I finish the, de the gusset decreases, how many rows I actually have to knit to finish out the sock. Um, and it makes it really easy for me because I knit my socks one at a time. Um, when I used to knit them two at a time on one circular, um, I didn't have to worry about counting rows because it was just done at the same time. Um, but it's been a long time since I was able to knit socks two at a time. Um, I do have wrist problems, so it's not it's not easy for me to manage a long circular often. So the nine inch circulars are what's um, what's good for me when I come when it comes to sock knitting. Which speaking of the nine inch circulars, I'm using my Chiragu nine inch uh, US size two 2.75 millimeter needles. Um, I like to knit my socks on a US two rather than a US one. Um, I know a lot of people that's the popular thing is the US ones. Um, I don't like the fabric that I get on a US one. Um, apparently, when I knit socks and only socks, I have a tighter gauge than I do any of the time that I knit. Um, I can be working with fingering weight yarn on any other pair of needles, and it's just, it's fine. But the second that it becomes socks, I don't know what it is, it's like my tension changes, um, and I get a, a tighter gauge on when I'm working on a sock than I do any other time. I don't know why. Um, so for me to go to a US1 when working on socks just doesn't make any sense because it, it just gets too dense, it gets too, it, there's no give to the fabric really, it gets very like um, stiff and can stand up on its own. So I always do US size 2. Um, that's why I'm always telling people to experiment with needle sizes. Just because someone says this is like the needle that I always use for this doesn't mean that's the needle that you have to use. Um, just like swatch, figure out your gauge, and kind of go from there. Um, and socks, as long as they fit, it really doesn't matter what your gauge is um, to an extent. Obviously, you don't want a gauge that's so loose that, you know, you can see right through it. But you also don't want a gauge that's so tight. It's like, it's like trying to put on a compression sock or something. Um, so yeah, I do knit mine on US size 2. I did have some questions about that on my Instagram when I shared a picture of my socks and they were like, are those US size 2? Yes, I knit all my socks on US size 2. Unless the yarn specifically calls for something larger, like a US 3 or whatever. I know that some patents Croy calls for a US 3. Um, I often still use US 2 um, because my gauge doesn't change that much with patents Croy. Um, except for the sock I showed you guys earlier. I took it off the blocker, but um, this sock right here um, I did knit this on a US size 2 as well, but looking back, I would probably knit this on a US 3. Um, because again, different yarns. This one's slightly thicker. I think this one actually comes up at a sport weight. Um, but again, this is where experimentation comes in. Which, speaking of experimentation and breaking my own rules, <laughs> um, 
I have two more sock projects to show you guys. I cast these on last week or this week. Today's Tuesday, so it was definitely last week. I cast them on like last week or over the weekend. The first one is a toe-up sock, which if you know me, uh, if you follow my Instagram or if you've seen the podcast, you'll notice, I mean, you'll know that I don't really knit toe-up socks um, for myself. I don't really like the way that they fit me, but I have a friend that I knit my toe -up, uh, socks for toe-up because for some reason that's the way that she prefers them don't know so I've got that going on right now I'm a little bothered by how big this white stripe is compared to the other two stripes but I'm trying to get over it um, this yarn is Plymouth Plymouth yarn um, diversity in the colorway number 0004 that's what the label looks like you'll never be able to read it back here there we go that's what the label looks like and that's what the yarn looks like and uh, there's the colorway name. It does say 0004. Hopefully you can see that. One day I'll get used to adjusting the uh, focus back and forth. But yeah, I'm a few uh, rounds past the toe increases. I think I'm actually at 10 rounds past the toe increases. So I, I need to place my first marker. But um, these, uh, along with the next pair of socks, are for a special thing I'm doing. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because you know how you make all these plans and then something happens and it, it goes awry. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to say anything definitively, but this summer I should have something pretty cool for you guys. I'm very excited about it. If everything works out the way that I have planned, it's just going to be incredible. But just in case I'm not saying what it is yet because don't jinx myself. The other sock whip I have, they're both living in the same bag, um, which I'll show you, is my, what brand is this? Woodsy and Wild bag. I think this is actually a Notions bag. I don't remember what she said, but I used it as a small sock bag. But there's her label. Hopefully you can read that. Woodsy and Wild. And I love this print as well. I think it's really cool. And then I don't know if you can tell on the bottom, but the bottom uh, darker gray section is very sparkly. Don't know how well that's picking up in the light, but it is sparkly. Okay, the second sock whip that's for the same um, project, the same um, uh, thing that I'm working on, which by the way, you've probably figured it out by now, but those were also Chiago 9 inch US size 2, 2.75 millimeter needles, which um, as are these. So this is a cuff down one, which is my preferred method of sock knitting. Um, and I'm actually thinking about ripping this back a little bit. Uh, I always do 16, 16 round cuffs um, in two by two ripping, because that's just my preference. And I did 20 for some reason, because I was like, let's experiment, and I regret it. <laughs> I don't like longer ribs. If I'm gonna have a longer leg area, I want it to be the stock in it section. Um, I know that some people prefer longer ribs because they're like, you know, it'll hug the, your leg better, it'll fit it better, whatever. I'm not one of those people. I prefer longer stock in it sections when it comes to, um, when it comes to my socks. So I'm gonna take this up close so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. You can see my adorable little cat stitch marker. Those were a gift from a friend for, uh, for Christmas. Um, but yeah, as you can see, long rib, and I'm only a few rounds into the leg. Maybe I'll get over it and just leave the rib as is, but I highly doubt it. I think I'll probably rip it out today. I won't rip it out entirely. I'll just pick back up somewhere in mid-cuff and finish it out with just 16 rounds instead of, instead of 20. But yeah. So the yarn I'm using is um, Adelaide Cottage in one of the Harry Potter Club colorways. So this is the Wicked colorway, which is a... Um, it's a reference to Ron Weasley. If you've seen the movies or read the books, you know. I actually used this yarn for a design of mine. Um, my crocheted headband. I think it was called By Any Other Name. I'll put a picture right there if I remember to. But yeah, that's this. And uh, that's basically all of the works in progress on my needles. So later today, I'm going to rip out the uh, ribbing, or rip it back rather and finish it out with just 16 rounds instead of 20. And that should be fine. That shouldn't be that hard. That kind of finishes out my works in progress. So I just want to talk for a minute about um, some recent stash acquisitions. And we're going to start with two more skeins of Cascade Heritage Sock. They have two different labels. I don't know why. I think they recently updated their labels. So that one might be the old one. This one might be the new one. I don't know. I've gotten this label before in the past. 
So maybe it's not a new label. I don't know. This blue one is in the colorway Bachelor Button. It's colorway number 5741. And then the brown one is in the colorway Bark. And it's in the color number 5609. The colorway names are not actually listed on here. I only know because I looked at it the other day because I was trying to figure out what colors these were again. I recommended them, or a friend asked me what the blue was in my stash. And I was like, I think it's Bachelor Button. Anyways, so that's these. Hopefully you can get a better look at them. There's the tag. I'm hoping that this stuff isn't showing up backwards. I think maybe I'm just being stupid, but it's showing up backwards on my screen and I'm just not noticing that. But yeah, Cascade Heritage, brown and gray. I mean, uh, brown and gray, brown and blue. This is going to be another shawl, surprise, surprise, which I'm really, really excited about. I think these, these pair well together. They've got a really good contrast. Um, the black on screen right now kind of looks, I mean, the black, the brown on screen kind of looks black right now, but it is brown. Um, They've got really, really good contrast in person. Um, the brown is like a really deep, like espresso brown. And then this blue is like sky blue. It's just, it's a great, great contrast. So I'm excited to cast this shawl on and get to work on it. Next up, I have another two skeins of um, yarn scheduled, or not scheduled, uh, another two skeins of yarn slated for a shawl design. This is Madeline Tosh in the Bone Coral colorway. Yeah, Bone Coral. And this one is in the Joshua Tree colorway. Can we just talk about how well these pair together? I'm dying. Um, so this bone coral has some, let me see if I can show you. This bone coral has some speckles in it um, of that darker Joshua tree colorway. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Um, it does have some speckles in there of the darker Joshua tree colorway. Um, so when I was looking on the website, I looked for something that would match with those speckles because the bone coral um, actually has a lot of different speckling. This has got the lighter like teal colors and then it's got the neon greens and even some orange up here at the top. Um, so I wanted to pick one central color that I felt like went with it pretty well and the Joshua Tree colorway just kind of like spoke to me as soon as I put them side by side. So that's what I'm doing for that or rather going to be making a shawl out of these. I'm super super excited for this. Um, I think that these colorways just go so well together. Um, and I already know exactly what this shawl is going to look like in my mind. Like I have it completely mapped out. So this will probably be the next shawl that I cast on. Um, because the other one, the one from the Cascade Heritage, the Bachelor Button and Bark, um, I have a vague concept of what I want that one to be, but this one's like clearly mapped out. I have it, um, I have it, um, not swatched. What's the word? Sketched. I have it sketched out and kind of like some stitch patterns decided. Um, I will have to swatch and double check that it works with this because it puts a lot of, um, a lot of pressure, not pressure. It puts a lot of the design and like making sure the texture is really visible. What's the word called? Stitch definition. It needs a lot of stitch definition from the green. Um, and I don't know if the green is too dark. So hopefully it's not, it seems pretty light actually. Um, when you look at it in person, it's got a nice shine to it. So hopefully this one works out perfectly and we can just go. All of these yarns I'm showing, by the way, were ordered from the same place. I ordered them from Eat Sleep Knit, which is the place that I um, was accepted to as a um, pattern fellow, is what they call us. So basically, um, I was given the uh, pattern design fellowship scholarship, I think is what they call it. I don't remember. Basically, they provided me with some yarn support um, in exchange for me, you know, talking about them on my patterns and saying, like, hey, this, this, uh, company helped me do this thing um which in my opinion is a pretty fair trade um they provided not only yarn support but they also provided behind the scenes um things like testing and um tech editing photography if need be etc um which is really really great to be um it's really really great to have that opportunity because sometimes you know it's not just yarn support that someone needs sometimes it is actually testing, tech editing, photography, whatever, and having them be able to be right there and be able to help with whatever someone needed is really, really great. Um, I'll have uh, a link in the description below with more information about the fellowship in case any of you guys are interested um, and want to check that out. But anyway, this yarn is the last that I ordered from that um, website at the current moment. I'm going to make another order soon. Um, 
I love these skeins together. Now that I'm holding them up, I'm like, wow, that would, that would look really good together. I don't know why shawls are on my brain, but I'm like, this would look really good together in a shawl. So this is worsted weight. This is Cascade, uh, Cascade 220 Heathers in the color number 9462. That's what the purple is. The pink is in the uh, 9681. And the gray, which I think this one's called silver, is in the 8011 colorway. So I did not buy these um, to go together. Now that I see them together, they're kind of like, that really works. Um, but they were not originally purchased to go together. They were originally purchased as three separate skeins to do three different projects. Um, that's something else that's kind of secret. It's got nothing to do with the socks I've been working on. But it is something that I hope to bring to fruition in 2022, if not 2023. I'm somebody that looks ahead so far. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that these actually look really, really well together. So maybe I, maybe I might have to order three more and do something with these together because they're really speaking to me right now. Hopefully that's a better or a good close up look at them. This pink has my heart, as does this as is this purple, but you guys know gray always has my heart, so they actually all do. <laughs> and that's the last of the yarn that I ordered from Eat Sleep Knit. I do have a few more skeins to show you um, that I ordered from elsewhere. I ordered these from a place called uh, Lamykin's Hideaway, I think is what they called it. I'll have a link below. Um, the woman who runs the place actually posted in a Facebook group I'm a part of and was talking about how they were trying to move old stock because she had new stock coming into the store. It is a physical store. I believe that it's in Ohio. Um, I could be wrong about that, but I think it's in Ohio. Um, maybe it's New Hampshire. Maybe I'm wrong. Either way, it has a physical location, um, but I ordered these online because she was talking about how um, they were trying to move stock and she had put I think it was like up to 75% off some of these so sorry if the camera angle looks different now I have to take a break but um, I believe what I was talking about uh, a few minutes ago was the yarn that I purchased from Lamykin's Hideaway which I purchased these two skeins of Cascade Heritage Prints um, it's a 75-25 superwash merino nylon blend so a standard soft blend with 437 yards this one's in the color number 65, and this one's in the color number 71. So we've got a fun rainbow, or like not rainbow, but primary stripes, and then stripes in purple and blue. Which if you don't notice about me, purple and blue, um, I, I really enjoy knitting with those colors. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. I'm obsessed with the bright of the primary colors, the primary stripes, excuse me. I just think it looks really, really cool. But yeah, these are originally, they have a label on here that says it's uh, $14.50. And I actually got these for just a couple of bucks because they were like 75% off because the woman who owns the place was trying to move stock at the time, um, which was great. So as soon as I saw that, I, I, I jumped on these because um, I have actually never used the Heritage prints before. I've used the Heritage sock and they feel quite similar. If anything, the prints feels just a tiny bit uh, softer than the, I actually still have the Heritage sock over here. Yeah, the prints feel just a tiny bit softer than the uh, Cascade Heritage uh, regular sock, but I'm super, super excited to see um, how these are going to knit up and stay tuned because these are going to be super fun socks. Next up, I got a brand that I have seen. Um, this is again, I purchased this from Lamykin's Hideaway. Um, I got a brand that I had seen before other people talk about and I'd seen it online um, and never actually used it. So this is online super sock. Um, paint. I don't know if paint is the color, like the colorway, because they say paint color. It's 100 grams or 420 meters. I don't know what that is in yardage. I'm assuming. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. I'm assuming it's about the same as the other one. Yeah, it's about 437, 420, somewhere in there, because it definitely feels like a standard sock weight um, or a sock uh, sock weight, sock amount, something like that. But yeah, it's 75% um, virgin wool and 25% poly, poly, polyamide, polyamide, something like that. I never know how to pronounce things. Um, it is in the... I'm just going to show you the label. And you guys can determine what that means. They've got like a party number and then something else, some other number over there. I don't know what it means. I'm also going out of focus. 
I don't know what that means. It's a party number and then a far bay number. So the one that says far bay is 2125 and then the party is 3435. So again, I don't know what that means. I don't know what the actual color rename is. Um, I forgot to check when I sat down to um, record this podcast. I didn't um, check the color rename for any of these. Um, it says super stock paint on the actual like um, sticker label. So I'm assuming the paint is the brand and the colorway number is something else. But yeah, this is the colors. And I think those are super, super cool. They kind of remind me of like basketball. I don't know why. Like some type of sports thing. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to knit these up and kind of like experiment with how the, um, experiment with how this base works up. I'm super excited because while it is a fairly standard sock base, it's 75-25 um, <clears throat> woolen and uh, polyamid. So while this is a standard sock base, 75% uh, <clears throat> wool and 25% um, polyamid, it does feel quite rustic, kind of like if you've ever used um, patent square socks, um, it gives off the same rustic feel. Um, it's not scratchy or anything, it's not like it feels like too hard to work with or anything, it's just rustic feeling. It's not as soft as a superwash merino, um, which I'm fine with. I'm not somebody that gets fussed about the contents of my sock as long as it has polyamid or nylon or something like that in it because I don't trust, I know there are people out there that are like, superwash socks like are perfectly fine without any nylon or anything. I get scared. I need to have something in there. So, but I'm super, super excited to try this yarn as well as the other two yarns. Um, and then the only other yarn that I got from Lamykin's Hideaway is this uh, Lang Yarns Jawool Superwash. And I'm dying over how tiny the skein is. Cause it looks like it's wound up like a skein you would get at like Joann's or something. Um, and so it, lo it, lo it looks like a mini version of a skein. I'm dying. When it came in the mail, I was just like, I'm dead. Um, but yeah, it is Ling Yarns Joe Wool Superwash. Hopefully you can read that pretty well. And it's in the color number, I think it's 842. It's right there. Hopefully you can read that, 842. And then I don't know what that yarn is over there. But it is a 50 gram skein. Let me turn the focus it again. Um, it is a 50 gram skein, 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamid, and it came with a little, uh, little bobbin. I don't know where I put it. It came with a little bobbin of, um, reinforcement thread, which I've never worked with reinforcement thread before. I've never, um, had a pair of socks where I felt like, sorry, there was a fuzz on my camera. I've never worked with a pair of socks where I felt like I needed reinforcement thread at the heels. Um, I know some people also put reinforcement thread at the toes. Um, but I, I pulled it out because I didn't think I would use the reinforcement thread and now I have no idea where it went. So I guess I won't be using the reinforcement thread. I bought this yarn for two reasons, mainly because I had never used Lang Yarns Jaw Wool before and I've seen it on Instagram a couple of times, or not a couple of times, I've seen it multiple times um, on Instagram and in Facebook groups and stuff and people overseas talk about this yarn like it is like the best, um, I don't want to say cheap sock yarn because I don't know exactly what it's priced over there. Over here, this one was priced for ten fifty, but again, I got it like seventy five or some percent off, so I only paid a couple bucks for this. But um, I got this mainly because I wanted to try the Lang Yarns Jawum. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and then the only other reason I got it was I figured that I could use this for um, uh, heels, cuffs, and toes, or just uh, heels and toes. I don't really use uh, contrast cuffs anymore. That was kind of a decision I came to a few years ago where I just don't really like using uh, contrast uh, contrast cuffs anymore. But yeah, this is 50 grams or 210 meters. Again, I don't know what that is in yardage. I'm assuming it's like 200 something, maybe like 220, I'm gonna guess, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited to use this for heels, cuffs, and toes. Um, I would use it for a full skinny yarn because, or not sorry, not full skinny yarn, a pair of socks. Um, because this is enough for me to do a shorty pair of socks. Um, I'm a US size 7. Um, but I think that it would be cool to see how it works up um, in uh, heels and toes. So that is all of the yarn that's come into my possession in the last few weeks. Um, I honestly can't believe how much I've ordered so far this year. I have ordered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 new skeins of yarn. Oh my god. <laughs> um, 
there's a part of me that should be more shamed than I am, but it's okay. <laughs> um, the only reason why I'm sort of like, why do I have more yarn in here is because I am trying to work through my stash. Um, I'm trying to... I'm not trying to de-stash. I'm not trying to... I know Natalie of the Nitty Nitty, the Nitty, Nitty Podcast um, on YouTube. She um, recently went through all of her yarn and did a huge declutter, de-stash thing um, because she's moving into a smaller location. Um, I am not trying to downsize my stash for any reason. It's just more like I've had yarn in there for years that I've never even touched. Like these that I, that I spoke about in the finished objects, my um, uh, Red Heart Super Saver stripes, retro stripe headbands. Gosh, that's a mouthful. These rainbow headbands. Um, this used yarn that's been in my stash for uh, several years now and I was just like coveting those skeins and didn't want to um, use them for anything and then wasn't really sure what I wanted to use them for so being able to really like pull through my stash and see what I have. Now that it's all on Ravelry, it's not a photograph, but now that it's all on Ravelry um, it's a great way for me to actually be able to see what, what I actually have in my stash and know that hey, you've had this skein for forever, it's time to use it. So that's what I'm kind of working on right now, um, is uh, just really using up the yarn that I have. So it's not out of a thing of like, I have too much and I want to downsize. It's more or less like, I have all this yarn I've never used and I've coveted it for so long and I need to start using it because otherwise it just sits in your stash collecting dust. Um, I do have those special skeins that are gonna like sit in my stash for a while so I can just like look at them and stuff because I'm one of those people that it's like it looks so pretty in a hank um, or even a skein sometimes that I'm just like I just want to look at you <laughs> and see you for forever so I do have some yarns like that but um, the vast majority of them I'd like to work through a large portion of them. <laughs> So that wraps up this podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you haven't already, click subscribe um, to be notified of when I upload new podcast episodes. I may also try to insert some vlogs in the future. I'm not really sure how that's going to work. Um, but anyway, thank you for checking out this podcast. I'll leave links to everywhere that you can find me on the internet down in the description box below. Um, and I hope to see you guys in less than a month next time. I'm aiming for like two weeks next time. Um, I will see you guys when I see you. Take care and happy knitting. Bye.